Howdy, sixth grade. Today we're talking about multiplying fractions and mixed numbers. You learned a little chant and dance scheme today to remember this, but uh, I just want to include a few more notes to make sure you get some practice doing it on your own. So here we go, name, date, title, and notes. Fraction multiplication occurs when we have part of a part. Uh, notice the emphasis on that first letter so that you don't miss here. It's, it's part of a part. So um, if I say that an example today was Carla had part of a candy bar and she gave part of that which she had to Ariana. So that's part of a part. You see she doesn't have the whole candy bar, she has part of it and she's going to give away uh, a section of that. So it's like a section of a section. When we multiply fractions it's top times top over bottom times bottom. And I think you already have committed that to memory which is good. But just two more notes because we will be uh, multiplying mixed numbers as well and we need to change mixed numbers to improper fractions so the idea there is that if you have a mixed number you can't do top times top over bottom times bottom because well the mixed number doesn't have a top and a bottom section so what we need to do is we need to create uh, improper fractions and improper fractions have just a numerator and denominator so then we can do top times top over bottom times bottom but you'll see right here like you can't multiply by the top half of four or the bottom half of two it doesn't make much sense so we make improper fractions first if you're wondering about whole numbers like how do I make a whole number into an improper fraction well you just write it as a fraction over one so example nine is equal to nine over one and we talked about that today too but it's good to put it back down and now that has a top and a bottom you could do uh, nine times one-third because now nine over one has a top to do top times top and it has a bottom to do bottom times bottom the final note is that you cannot forget to simplify we're gonna talk tomorrow in class about a way to simplify as you multiply but for now I just want you to know that uh, when you get your answer you need to see whether it's reduced all the way let's see where this whole idea came from of top times top over bottom times bottom. In case you forgot or in case you like the visual representation, we're going to do another one. I will show you that hmm, three fifths times one half is indeed equal to top times top three over bottom times bottom ten. We'll see that this is equal to 3 tenths. Let's see why. So first, I like to split this up into uh, the first fraction using vertical lines. If you could call that a line, I'm trying. So we've got our fifths now. And I know that we have 3 fifths. That's the first fraction we're concerned with. This is one whole unit, and we have 3 fifths. So to shade three-fifths, I'm going to use these horizontal lines, and they go from high to low, right to left. And so we have three-fifths right here, and the idea is, okay, we got three-fifths, but we want to know what's part of that. What is one-half of three-fifths? And you think to yourself, well, there's three pieces, so I don't, I can't just choose half of that because it doesn't divide evenly by two and I wouldn't even know what to call it so one thing some people are going to want to do is they're going to want to maybe just draw part of this line and they'll say well now we don't have equal pieces so what we need to do is we need to cut it horizontally into halves the whole thing will cut all the way through and we'll say three fifths so we've shown three fifths using vertical bars and now we also want to show one half and we'll do that uh, by splitting with two horizontal bars and now we'll shade one half using um, oh goodness using uh, diagonals that go the other way so we are shading one half and we could really just stop right here and say this is one half of the three-fifths it's just the top half of three-fifths or we could continue going all the way it's up to you but what's important is that we're focused on what is one half of the three-fifths. What is shaded by both? And the answer there is what is shaded by both sets of diagonals? It's these three pieces right here. These three pieces. And what size are those pieces? Well, ten of them make up the whole, so that's three out of ten, or three-tenths. 
So the idea here is we shaded, or we focused on one half of three fifths. Okay, one half we shaded one section, one out of two sections. But if we had fifths and halves, we cut up fifths and halves. We need to multiply those denominators because we know that we're doubling the number of total pieces. So this is why top times top over bottom times bottom works. It's a way to visualize it. It's a way to use a picture to solve your problem and make more sense of it. But if you just like memorizing the rule and you understand that it comes from somewhere, uh, that will usually serve you well enough. Let's see some word problems and other examples where we just have to solve. So let's see, not, not picture problems, but uh, problems to work out. This is example one. Make sure you include this in your notes. We have two and five eighths times four. Now we know that one of my notes said that we need to use improper fractions, so we need to make these into improper fractions. Two and five eighths. Well, we can't do top times top over bottom times bottom. Let's find out how many total eighths do we have. So I know I want this as a number of eighths. And I know I already have five eighths, but I also know I have two full units. And if I cut these two complete units into eighths, for each one I would get eight eighths. A full bar will give you eight eighths if you cut it up. So two sets of eight eighths, or two times eight, would be sixteen eighths. But we already have five, so that would be a total of twenty-one. So we get sixteen eighths, we get eight eighths from one of these bars, we get another set of eight eighths from another full unit, so we have 16 eighths, and then we already had 5 eighths to add to it. So we have 21 eighths, and we need to multiply times a fraction. Well, I don't have a fraction here. We just, we just have one, or we just have four whole units. What is four whole units as a fraction? It's just four over one. And the fraction bar can be thought of as division, so that makes sense. Four divided by one is four. It's writing the same thing. Now we need to multiply top times top. Four times 21. Well, four times 20 is eight tens, eighty, but then four times one is four ones. Eighty-four, bottom times bottom, eight times one is eight. Okay, we can simplify this. Okay, how many full units do I have if I have eighty-four eighths? Well, how many full sets of eight could I have? I'd have ten full sets of eight, and that would be using eighty of my eighths, but I have four more, four more eighths left over, and hopefully you see that that is able to be simplified as well. For that fraction, I'll divide top and bottom by 4 to simplify, because 4 goes into both. And we would get 10 and 1 half. And if you thought that 4 is half of 8, so you just said 10 and a half right away, that makes sense too. Make sure you have those notes. Make sure it made sense. We needed to have improper fractions. We should know how to make those. Uh, and then we converted it back to a mixed number and simplified. Let's look at the next one. This one's a word problem for us. It says, if there are five and five-eighths pies left after a party, and Mr. S eats two-thirds of the leftovers, probably as a midnight snack, how many pies will be left in the morning? So the reason I included this one is I'm trying to get you to see that this is part of a part. Let's say we didn't know it was just multiplication problems we were working on. Are we add, subtracting, adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? Well, there's five and five-eighths left over. So that's, we have parts of pies, and I mean part of that section. So we need to multiply. What are our numbers? Five and five eighths. So we have five and five eighths, and I eat two thirds. So we're going to do part of a part means we need to multiply times two thirds. Again, we cannot multiply top times top over bottom times bottom if we have this mixed number, so we need to create an improper fraction, five whole units, five times eight would give us forty eighths, but we already had five, so that's forty plus the five we already had, that's forty five eighths times two thirds. And again, tomorrow we're going to talk about an easier way to simplify rather than doing that at the end, but here we're going to multiply top times top, two times forty five is ninety, two times forty is eighty, and two groups of five would give us another ten. And 8 times 3 is 24. Now this is one where we still need to make a, a mixed number because we know we have an improper fraction. That was okay when we were multiplying, but now we're trying to find our answer. We want to express it in simplest form uh, as a fraction. 24 goes into 90. Let's try 3 times because I know 3 quarters goes into 90 cents. 3 times 24 
3 times 4 is 12. Yeah, 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. 72, we'll subtract, we get 18. So we have 3 and 18 24 That's how many pies are left over. But again, this is able to be simplified. So we'll say 3 and 18 24 So What are those both divisible by? Well, I know that 2 goes into both of them. I know 3 goes into both of them. 6 goes into both of these. So we need to divide top and bottom by 6. And we'll get 3 and 18 divided by 6 is 3, and 24 divided by 6 is 4. 3 and 3 fourths pies are left over. So again, we had to make sure we had improper fractions. That we're multiplying top times top over bottom times bottom. Finally, we're simplifying it to a mixed number. Uh, make sure you have those notes. I'm going to leave you with some example problems per usual. The first one is just 1 8 times 3 fifths. I already gave you fractions. Don't worry about mixed numbers and propers. Number two says, part of Justin Bieber's new album is a song that is three and a half minutes long. If he is saying sorry for three-fourths of the song, how many minutes is he singing the word sorry for? And uh, don't get me wrong, it's a great song. I'm not trying to make fun of the Biebs. I mean, you have to admit, pretty great haircut. Do your best. Fill this out. I'll see you tomorrow.